This is a gyroplane, and today we're in Costa Rica, which is a perfect place for something as slow as this, open cockpit, and a heck of a lot of fun. And thanks to the pandemic, I did something I never thought I would do and learned to fly one. I learned to fly at Fly With Us, a father-son operation at the Autonuez Airport on the country's central Pacific coast. From the first lesson, Dad Frank made it clear that this is a professional operation. The pre-flight briefing was thorough, methodical, and highly detailed. Since most of their customers are Spanish speakers, I had to translate the checklist into English. It was a great exercise in learning the ins and outs of the gyro. This is an MTO Sport from Autogyro in Germany. It's powered by a Rotax 912 ULS engine. I had always considered Rotax really only sport engines, but flying in front of one for more than 20 hours now, I'm convinced it is a better, more modern experience for pilots. There's no mixture, cold or hot starts, and managing temps is like managing temps in a car. You basically forget about it. Simplicity is a theme in the gyro. The two-blade rotor system is constantly in auto-rotation. So other than pre-rotation, for takeoff. There's no transmission, drive shafts, or really any connection to the engine that can fail. It just sits up there spinning away by its happy self. As a transitioning pilot, most of the training centers around ground handling and differential flight characteristics. Not quite helicopter, not quite airplane. The gyro is sort of like if the two had a baby. The controls are traditional airplane, but they move a rotor, similar to a helicopter. There is a horizontal and vertical stabilizer, a controllable rudder, but no elevator. Pitch is controlled through power changes and changing the angle of the rotor disc. Pre-flight done, it's time to fly. I did most of my training with son Nicholas, an experienced instructor in his own way. Taking off in the gyro is completely different from an airplane. First, you must get the rotor turning prior to the takeoff run, and that means a minimum RPM. This is done with the pre-rotator, which in the MTO is a hydraulic cylinder that tightens a belt to the engine drive shaft and then transfers that energy to a pinion that goes into a ring gear, turning the rotor. It's like an elaborate starter for an airplane. When you're ready to go, release the pre-rotator, pull back on the stick, add full power, and hang on. In the air, the gyro behaves a lot like an airplane, except for two key areas. The giant disc above your head is a massive chunk of drag, so power leads all altitude changes. And more importantly, air must always be coming from below the rotor for the auto rotation to continue. Push negative Gs and your day will become lousy and fast. It also lands fairly conventionally, although there are ground handling concerns. Here Nicholas is flying and you can see how short the landing is but also that the stick must come forward as soon as you're stopped and under control, the rotor brake is then applied. Make sure the rotor is always into the wind, taxi slow, make sure you fly it to the parking spot, and you'll be fine. Ian Twombly, AOPA Live.